Hi everyone, my name is Alex Creech. I'm here with Matt Ostrowski. He's a teacher in St. John's County. Uh, we just wanted to sit down and I wanted to ask him a few questions about St. John's County School Districts and uh, find a little bit more about that. So let's get right into it. Let's do and, it. Uh, Matt, how long have you been a teacher? So I've been a teacher since 1999. I actually tell people that I started teaching last century. Um, <laughs> I started in 1999 with St. John's School District and um, I've been teaching elementary school ever since then. Okay. And yeah. has your roles changed over the years? Tremendously. Yeah. So my first year teaching, I was teaching fifth grade, and this is an actual label that they put on students. I was teaching fifth grade, severely emotionally disturbed students. That was the title. Okay. That was severely <clears throat> emotionally disturbed. Has and, that changed? Um, so yes. So now that they would, they would probably refer to those students as VE or varying exceptionalities, because that can be a lot of different things. Um, so that year coming straight out of college was trial by fire for sure. 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 I was like 22, 23 years old, had no teaching experience, just got my degree and dove right into that. Um, so I did that for a year. Since then, most of my career has been in a, a general education classroom. I transitioned from that into um, teaching second grade, just in a regular general education classroom. Over the years, I've done third grade, fourth grade. Um, for eight years, I was a library media specialist, mm. um, which um, layman's terms is a school librarian, <clears throat> okay. really, is what that is. <laughs> we have all kinds of fancy titles in, in education, just like they do in every other industry. Um, but yeah, I, was, I got to be the one who uh, had the kids sit on the rug and I would do story time and I would get kids excited about reading books and excited about literature. That's fun. Oh, it was so much fun. Um, and then for the last four years, I've been teaching virtual school. So I'm teaching. Okay. And for what grades for that? Great question. So my first year doing it, I taught first grade and this was right when COVID hit and everybody was <clears throat> doing the virtual thing gotcha. and learning from home. Um, now I'm teaching third grade, but I'm also teaching a middle school career research course and I'm teaching a high school leadership development. Wow. Okay. So, so kind of all over the place. Yeah, so now right. with this year, I can officially say that I've taught everything from pre-K to 12th grade. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, so in, your, in this new role, uh, who qualifies to, for this e-learning, this online learning, and, or who benefits and, or who's allowed to do it? So as you can imagine, when COVID first hit and everybody was doing the virtual thing, there was a huge demand for virtual school teachers. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's when I came on. Um, as far as qualifications go, there aren't, uh, there's not a special certificate or, or um, degree that's needed for virtual learning. Um, but it's definitely um, strong teachers are needed, teachers who have technology experience, someone who can have kids remain engaged from different places. You know, it's one thing yeah. when we're face to face, you know, mm -hmm. I can, I can keep my students engaged that way. But when I'm in my home and they're in their home, it's a little bit of a different game. So definitely yeah. strong teaching skills are needed <clears throat> there. And as far as who benefits, um, I'd like to think that our students benefit from it. You know, the virtual learning is not necessarily a model that works for everybody. Um, a lot of kids I know need to be in a brick and mortar environment. They need to be with other classmates, but there are a lot of great benefits to virtual learning as well. Um, I have students who are training to be gymnasts and soccer players and they train all day long and then they do their schoolwork in the evening. Uh, I have students who travel all the time. And as long as you have internet connection, you can do our courses. You have to reside within St. John's County right. to, to be registered with us. Right. But last year I had kids who joined my live lessons from, I had one kid in Africa, in Cote d'Ivoire. I had another kid in Thailand. Another one went to Argentina. I've had students that I've wow. interacted with on a layover at the airport while they're traveling to California. So it's super flexible and you can do it wherever you are. So it, it doesn't work for everybody, but it definitely works for some. Wow. And is the, <clears throat> is the word getting out about, about this program, uh, how, how, how much does St. John's County know about the online learning? That's a great question. Um, Word is getting out and we're trying to get it out to others. Um, you know, we had a spike in enrollment during COVID and then shortly after that, students started to return to their brick and mortar setting. Um, but we do a couple of times a year welcome new applicants. Uh, we definitely try to get the word out that, hey, this might not be something that you're aware of. 
um, but you can still have your student learn all of our state standards the same way that they would in a classroom. Yeah. They can do it from home as well. So yeah. we do try to get the word out and try to um, increase enrollment and keep our enrollment up as much as we can. Yeah. And uh, I was just thinking about this. I guess, you know, parents are always concerned about student teacher ratio, student teacher ratio, but that's really not a concern of you. You just probably put out the material out there and then any of the third graders that want to access it or if it's that 12th grade class or that middle school class can can access it. Exactly. Yeah, those class ratios. So you're able to reach a lot more students. Absolutely. <clears throat> In fact, I'm, you know, even though I'm doing a middle school and a high school course, those are just those are both electives, but some of our middle school and high school teachers who are teaching the core classes, the science, social studies, math and, and reading and all that. Yeah, some of those have students who are full time virtual students who are home all day, but they're also taking some classes online, even though they're going to a brick and mortar setting. Gotcha. I have some of those <clears throat> of, of my own um, students who are going to St. John's County High Schools, um, but they're just taking an online elective as an option and they can gotcha. go to their virtual lab or they can do it from home to do my course as well. Just getting them prepared for that hybrid workplace. Exactly. They, well, and, and, and it's true. That's the reality <laughs> is that a lot of, a lot of employees, whatever the industry is, can work remotely and you need those yeah. skills to be able to work from home. You need some self-discipline yeah. to stay on track. Absolutely. Um, you need technological skills. You need to be able to communicate through a computer screen. So it's it's very beneficial to them. And what do parents moving to St. John's County uh, need to know about the school system? So St. John's County has a reputation for being one of the best school districts in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. In fact, that is <clears throat> a big reason why some families do move to St. John's County as opposed to any of the other neighboring counties. Mm -hmm. um, it's St. John's County does have a great reputation. So as far as what they need to know about it, I would say they should know that whatever part of the county they may be in, whether it's in the northern part of the county like Nocatee or the southern end of the county like St. Augustine Shores, their students, their children are going to be getting a top rated education in St. John's County. Okay. Um, and I've worked in affluent communities and I've worked in lower income communities. And my experience has been that by and large, the teachers in St. John's County know what they're doing and they're pushing their students to be, to be the best that they can. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, I'm sure it's refreshing to hear as a parent and uh, to drill down a little bit even further, uh, what do those parents moving to St. John's County, what should they know or what would you like them to know about the online learning that you provide? As far as virtual learning goes, we are the program that I teach for is called St. John's Virtual School. Okay. And we are technically a franchise of Florida Virtual School, our statewide virtual school gotcha. system. So if a student enrolls in Florida Virtual School, they're doing learning from home. They log into their courses and all of that. But their teacher could be in Tampa or in Jacksonville or Miami or Pensacola or anywhere in between. With St. John's Virtual School, we're all employees of St. John's County School District. Okay. So we're all local. So that means that when I talk to my kids, when I talk to my students, uh, I'm right there. I've seen my own students, even though we're virtual learners, I've seen them in stores. I've seen them in neighborhoods. I've seen them around town. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a little funny to, you know, they can see their teacher out in the wild, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, so students or parents, I should say, who are considering a virtual program, um, Flexibility is, by and large, one of the great benefits of the program. <clears throat> Students can work in their courses at morning, at night, on weekends and holidays. We expect them to keep pace with all of their courses, but students can also work ahead of pace, which means um, if a student gets way ahead, let's say, in their math course and they're done with everything that they need to do by, let's say, Thanksgiving, well, they're done until we go back to school in January. Mm. Um, so like I said, we don't want students to fall behind pace, but there's so much flexibility that students can work whenever they want to, as long as they're on pace. And when they're done with their course, they're done. Mm. And hey, you're on winter vacation a little bit early. I've, I've had students start winter vacation three weeks before the rest of the county. <laughs> Getting that college. Uh, there you that, go. Exactly. College winter break <laughs> that we all know to love. And I, 
to that to that same end, they could plan around that. You know, hey, we got a ski trip coming up, or we're going to go to Mexico for for a week, where maybe internet might be spotty, so they could work ahead for a week and then just take the week off for vacation and then yep. come back. That's that's exactly right, and that's exactly what we asked them to do. Is if you know you're going to be out of town, I have one one of my middle schoolers right now is on a mission trip in Panama. He, he told me right away, he said, Mr. O, I'm going to be out of town for a week or so just to let you know, but I'm going to do what I need to do ahead of time so that when I'm on my mission trip, I'm not missing anything. And then when he comes back, he's going to be right on track with everybody else. Nice. nice. Yes. Yeah, it's really great. And uh, Matt, <clears throat> what is your favorite part about being a teacher? Ooh, that's a good question. I think my favorite part about being a teacher is knowing and this is going to sound corny, but it's knowing that I'm, that I'm making a difference with somebody else, knowing that at the end of the day, I might be helping somebody become um, a teacher. I might be helping somebody become a nurse. I might be helping somebody become a pilot, you know, because there's no job out there that can be done without the help of a teacher. We all need to learn what we're doing from a teacher. So I, I love whether I'm teaching third grade or middle school or high school or whatever it is, knowing that I can just be a small piece of their puzzle is really cool for me. Yeah, that is great. And is there anything else you'd like to add about St. John's County, teachers, schools, things parents should know? No, I don't think so. I, um, you know, St. John's County, like I said, is it's a great school district, awesome teachers, high expectations. They're... Um, High schools have great academies. I know one of the high schools down in the South has a Vistar Banking Academy. Mm. Another one has a Computer Programming Academy, I think. So once kids get a little bit older and they get into high school, they can start thinking about what they want to be doing and start taking steps toward, toward those careers by, yeah. by joining an academy. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. Well, Matt, I really appreciate you taking the time and talking to me about St. John's County School and the virtual school. Uh, so this has been Matt Ostrowski with St. John's County Virtual School. Yes, sir. And I'm Alex Creech, Closing Deals and Heels and Cleats. We'll see you next time.